The United States is a nation awash in all kinds of social movements. For as long as the U.S. has existed, there have been groups trying to shape aspects of the culture into what they believe it should look like. Various movements have been known to focus on securing equal rights for all people, working to keep the environment clean, or financial equality. The media does an excellent job in covering many of them. There are others, however, which aren't so well canvassed. It's likely that the free software movement is one of these. Let's look at the history and goals of this movement and possible implications of the movement's success. To the average, moderately computer-savvy individual, the name might conjure various images. You may picture cruising through the iTunes, iTunes App Store and finding every program has the word free in the little box. The average consumer has likely had some experience with shopping for software. It can be a little disheartening to see a program which you were hoping to buy sporting a price tag in the hundreds or even thousands of dollars. This concept of free does not exactly encompass the founders' views, however. The movement had its beginnings in the, in the mid-1980s and was started with the intent of making software-based tools readily accessible to anyone who wanted them. One of the movement's founders, Richard Stallman, had his beginnings as a programmer at MIT. He and his fellow programmers had become accustomed to sharing computer code between themselves. At some point in the early 80s, their activities drew the attention of the Department of Defense, who insisted the code become closed to outsiders. Stallman favored the community of code sharing which he had found at MIT and began to advocate free software. To those outside of the programming community, computer software can be a bit of a mystery. The inner workings of it are often hidden to the user. Behind, behind Microsoft Word or Adobe Photoshop, there are likely thousands of lines of programming code that most of us will never see. This code dictates how a program does what it does. When you click a button, type a word, or change a picture in an image editor, different parts of the code will determine how the program reacts. To understand Mr. Stallman's frustration, it helps to know how software works and what the job of a programmer is. A simple explanation is that a programmer is trying to solve some problem using a computer. If you think of various pieces of code as tools, it simplifies the matter. These tools are used to build a solution to that problem. In the current popular model of software distribution, these tools are hidden from all but the developers. If there is some feature in a piece of software which another developer would like to mimic, this person is left to remake the tool. Also, if the software falls short in some way, even a knowledgeable programmer is helpless to fix or change the program. As a particularly apt analogy, Stallman has drawn comparisons between this and an absurd situation in the culinary world. He says, Imagine the outrage of cooks if they were told that, from now on, if you share or change a recipe, you'll be called a pirate and put in prison for years. The connection is clear enough. A recipe released by any cookbook is free to be changed or improved upon and redistributed according to the discretion of the buyer of the book. So, in regards to the free software movement, we may need to expand our definition of free. This concept of free is one that evolves more around freedom than being free of charge. Since the current model of software production and distribution is proprietary, multiple companies might be working on the same type of software and be unable to collaborate to make more quality products. Essentially, each company is re reinventing the wheel, as it were. If the model were adapted to include the philosophy of the free software movement, these companies' resources could be freed up. Instead of trying to redesign tools that another group has already designed, a company's programmers could be working to eliminate software bugs, improve user experience, or pioneer other unexplored software territory. The idea seems like it might be worth exploring. Proponents of the movement believe it would result in cheaper, more reliable software and a better environment for programming. However, this restructuring would have other implications. For the most part, America has a capitalist structure. People like to receive pay and recognition for the work that they do. It would appear that a system which advocates code sharing would be one where the work an individual does quickly becomes unattributed and distributed with no payment to the original creator. You can imagine the absurdity of a company like Apple releasing all of their code. They've invested large amounts of time and billions of dollars in creating their product. It would seem like foolishness according to contemporary wisdom. Perhaps, though, those are the costs of creating a better world for the future.